Hi, so welcome to this session on Automotive Linux Summit, this time happening virtually. So first thing, I hope everybody is fine. Take care on this very complex situation and hopefully next time everybody will be meeting in person uh, again in, in Tokyo. So this uh, session I'm going to talk about is the status of the HTML5 demo platform on NAGL, the structure and integration of web applications into the into the platform. Uh, so the first thing, this is a small agenda of what I'm going to cover in, in this in this talk. So I'm introducing a bit about who we are, and I'm explaining uh, the overall goal, the overall goals of the web runtime uh, of the AGL platform some uh, details on how Chromium and the web application manager architecture is used uh, to provide uh, HTML support uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the software platform. And then I'm getting into the details of the pure HTML5 uh, demo image, how its home screen is designed and how web apps are run into it and how new applications can be created and integrated into the system and a bit of the internals. And then I'm going to show a few examples of the way you web UI running on the reference hardware. And then I'm, I'm following up with some status update, plans for the future and, and some open sessions for questions and answers. So yeah, uh, Many people already know about, about us, uh, I belong to, my, well, my name is Lorenzo Tilbe and I work for Igalia. We are an open source consultancy. Uh, our headquarters is in Galicia in Spain, uh, but we are currently over 90 employees all over the world. And our main area of expertise is mostly specialized in, in browsers and web engines. So we have uh, owners and reviewers of different parts of Chromium, WebKit, uh, and WPE and Firefox. Uh, so recently on specific uh, events on, on both uh, communities, we have been actually uh, showing that have been basically the second biggest contributor to both Chromium and WebKit after Google and, and Apple respectively. Uh, so yeah, we have been working on, on web engines for a long time and that's the reason we are the responsible of the integration of a web application manager in Chromium based on, on AGL. And about that, we also have teams working on compilers, JavaScript engine and graphics and multimedia uh, accessibility and another few parts of, of the web engines. Uh, you're actually distributed worldwide uh, and there's there's people from Igali everywhere. So, it's I guess happening to most of us nowadays and especially in this pandemic situation. So um, why Chromium and WAM uh, into, into AGL platform? So basically uh, the idea was to have uh, uh, web engine support uh, in, the, in the automatic grid Linux uh, ecosystem. Basically, the reason to use uh, Chromium was uh, actually was a well-tested uh, web framework that it already have a separation of processes that actually splits between browser render GPU process to isolate execution to have security intera interactions with different layers, and now more recently with other uh, parts of the architecture that also allows to separate parts as, as input output or, or any other types of interaction. It's it's very used worldwide. It has like the latest updates of the specs. So it's it's powerful and yeah, and can be used in embedded devices, uh, providing good performance and, and lately also includes we will be talking about that a Wayland implementation uh, that uses better DPU power in the in the platform. And we are also using in this uh, scenario uh, the Web Application Manager or WAM that is uh, designed to uh, launch web applications as a standalone items, integrating the security model uh, to have like specific permissions for using different APIs that uh, web apps will be using, to have integration with the application lifecycle, 
uh, depending on the visibility and, and the state of running of the different web apps and it also simplifies other extra components of the of the browser uh, the idea of putting these two pieces together was to actually fulfill some some goals that were important for a yield that was okay uh, besides the already in place uh, cute based ecosystem it was important to have uh, support for HTML applications uh, which could be, be bring in flexibility and power for more developers and many other different collaboration profiles and, and have web applications uh, becoming actual uh, uh, any type of uh, first-class citizens in AGL. This is, this is that in the same type that other applications run natively on the system uh, web apps could be behaving in the same type of uh, security performance and uh, isolation as, as any other and it was also important because it could be uh, using any of the available standard apis which already provide uh, out of the box functionality for many web technologies that are already in place that provide connectivity that provide multimedia multimedia playback that provide many other things that are landing in vehicles of any type uh, nowadays in in any in any platform that wants to be production ready and and wants to have like all the capabilities that web standards provide it was also important to have like the freedom to use any fra framework front-end libraries to ensure portability so the the demo web apps have been uh, using plain javascript and, and html no any specific fra framework but anyone using uh, node in act react other toolkits as uh, Flutter, anything could be shipped into a web app and, and bring to to assess an application into a GL demo platform. And and then due to those reasons, it's easy to develop, to debug, and to customize to have interoperability with other services using web web sockets, as will be explained. So the specific details of this solution, it's based on Chromium and with the Web Application Manager, as mentioned. That was actually, uh, it's using, it has been created by uh, LG and, and upstreamed, uh, was developed for WebOS OC platform. And, and it's uh, a ledger on top of Chromium that was uh, adapted to have uh, connections the, with, with WAM. Uh, and already provide support to many cloud native uh, technologies. Uh, we have been also working on adapting the existing the implementation that Igalia was developing to have Ozone Wayland supporting Chromium that actually has recently made it to upstream desktop Chromium. Uh, so you know, the Delta could be smaller just by adapting the existing implementation. And that actually allows to use the GPU capabilities in embedded systems as, as the hardware platforms that are supported by AGL. So like more specific details on the architecture can be identified on some technical posts that I'm linking there on how, which are the details on the connections. We will be working on a few more uh, additive versions of them because a few things change in the connection between Chromium WAM and AGL with a new compositor, uh, but but basically a few documentation uh, posters are already in place there. Um, so what's the current status? So basically, uh, there's now a, a way to compile uh, HTML5 support uh, using like the existing repositories of HTML of of AGL. I mean. It's already integrated into the demo platform. There are already some uh, web apps uh, that replicate the behavior of the existing Qt versions uh, using the same actually connections with the application framework, but they are called using WebSocket APIs instead. And also it includes uh, a home screen, which then allows to have like an entire UI that is HTML. So 
both the layout, uh, both the demo applications and all the connectivity between all of them, it's, it's web technologies. Uh, so how this is actually done? So the, the garbage repositories for the sample applications are already into the garbage infrastructure. So those are the examples for the dashboard, the HVAC, the, the home screen, uh, the launcher that actually brings up like the list of existing applications and allows to run them. And other examples as a, a very simple media player, mixer and a settings uh, application. And also uh, the JavaScript library that is, is, used, is used by all of them will, will be also ported to, to Garrett repository. So it actually can be used as documentation for uh, any other application that want to use these these uh, already existing callbacks and uh, library API calls. So in general, for AGL, there's already documentation in place for any anyone willing to to build uh, the distribution from the scratch and start using uh, web apps or testing them or knowing how. I'm actually a web developer or I have my own applications that are HTML. How can I have them running into a yield? So this is part of the goal of this presentation. So there's already some reference and community BSPs that can be used to build into a yield. So um, aside from the reference hardware, uh, there are also the R car starter kits or any Intel hardware platform can be used as SNAC, as Minoboard, or Raspberry Pi 4 actually, or 3, and, and uh, emulation with Kimu. So the way to build HTML, it's actually uh, checking out the repository with the code. It can be done with, with the latest versions that are where HCI's fish, 903 was the la latest one or the new jumping jellyfish that has been actually uh, made it uh, it's it's also with the newest uh, functionalities and integrations there so any of them could be used there's uh, still some uh, ongoing work on on both to fix uh, and to complete some functionalities the examples i am showing here are using icefish uh, so this is basically the way that anyone can used to download the ICS repository. So basically in it, that actually check out that, um, that syncs to download the dependencies and then basically just uh, configure the, buy, the, the build and compile everything with Yocto. So it's important to use HTML to specify the AGL profile graphical HTML. And in order to have uh, the old UI showing the HTML components by default. Uh, the target that should be used with BitBake is, is that one, is BitBake uh, AGL demo platform HTML5. What's actually this instruction do? So this is besides the rest of the components of the old framework. Uh, it includes recipes to build as, as the two parts that were mentioned, that is WAM and Chromium. Uh, they were forked from the existing LG repositories that they actually contain all the changes that were needed to adapt them to run on top of AGL for both repositories. Uh, and, and details can be checked out on those repositories on, on the, the status about them and, and it will be renewed for a newer version of Chromium as commented on the ongoing work. Um, so basically, actually the, those build instructions uh, check out the code and build it. One that is compiled, uh, it's just possible to to flash the image to a physic SD card or into a virtual one to run with uh, Kimu and then just boot for the very first time. Uh, that will be showing uh, several components. So the main one will be like the HTML5 uh, home screen web application. That is basically like the layout with uh, 
a container in the right view that is going to be filled up by the launcher with the existing applications that are installed and by some shortcuts that can be configured directly on the HTML launcher application. Uh, in this case to show like the home, the, an entire Chromium browser, the HVAC or the, um, or the multimedia application and some status about connectivity and, and uh, uh, status of the date and so on. So this is basically like the layout uh, kind of application. And then inside uh, the launcher would be showing uh, in in the right part of the of the web of the uh, home screen application, just with the list of applications that can be triggered from there, and that can be actually clicked on, and we'll be calling the application from framework to launch the application using this view, and switch them uh, with the rest of the icons of the launcher of the home screen application. So. Which are the details that are needed to know on how the web applications run on AGL? So, um, uh, as the same for uh, native HT, uh, the native Qt applications, they are basically containing of a few meta information uh, files that define which will be the application on. So we will be showing a couple of examples, but basically it consists of a config XML file that has like the uh, uh, unknown ID, the name and description, and as well as license and a set of permissions that the application is going to require. Uh, this is actually what is going to be used with the security system to ensure that, uh, for instance, a game application in, is not going to be able to access the API that uh, HVAC applications, for instance, is going to be consuming to know the status of the fans of the car and things like that. Then the source with any of the application resources that are going to be bundled, either local or remote, if for some cases it's going to consume remote services. Uh, but basically for any web app that is going to be uh, bundled locally, just all the code of the HTML application, that can be, as, as we were mentioning, uh, compile and build with any toolkit or a web assembly or whatever. So this content or, or mentioned I just plain HTML. Uh, so these contents are actually packed into a dot wgt file and can be installed and put available in, into the image uh, like with command line or in the image with the uh, changes on the recipe very easily. So as I was commenting, any any toolkit can be used, or just Pure or Node or in Angular or React or yeah, uh, Flutter, anything else can be used to to put web apps in, into AGL uh, with the Web Application Manager and the Web Runtime in place. So uh, a couple examples that are available there and can be. This is an example are the ones for the HTML5 home screen. Uh, that is the, the config and XML and JSON that define like basically the structure and the elements that are going to be shown. And just getting them from the repositories, they, in, this, in this case, these examples are compiled with npm install and run build. And they, they, what, what he, this is actually doing is creating like the widget file, as was commented, that can be directly uh, copied into the into the image and installed with AFM utility install application widget. As the same as other applications, there will be installed in slash user local lib AFM applications. Uh, so that's actually quite convenient because they can be like modified live uh, either with once they are want to be tested in the in the device because the rest of the development of all the UI can be done in the desktop or anything else because it's just with a browser can be tested and this can be modified remotely with the web debugger or just physically in this in this direction so a couple of very simple uh, config xml files so it's actually a, a, a standard spec that defines it's 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 declared by W3C 
that defines the structure for widget uh, components. So this is basically what I was commenting. This this example is something that is just basically uh, picking a remote web service to connect to a remote independent streaming uh, music system. This is called Yamendo. So what this would require is just basically defining the name of the application, an icon that is going to be available in, in the platform, uh, like the index for the web app, and then uh, a set of uh, permissions that is going to be required. In this case, it's going to be access to display and audio to be able to actually show on the screen and uh, play uh, multimedia content. Yes, to also to render to render documentation to render uh, web content, I mean. And those are the, just basically the three permissions that it's going to be to be using. And then in this case, the index is something very simple that is just a wrapper of a window location uh, that is going to be serving this, this content. Uh, any other application that would be run locally would be like basically the same, any game or anything that can be deployed locally. And yes, without connectivity, like the service will be running. This is like a very simple example. Uh, and we will be showing a couple of more complex ones. Uh, something also interesting uh, for uh, investigating and debugging and tra tra tracking an issue is that actually uh, it's possible to connect with uh, a Chromium uh, browser in, in the desktop machine just with connectivity to the device and it's possible just to open the inspector remotely uh, to interact with the web app and to modify it any styling or use the JavaScript console to track any issue or anything that could be working not okay or tracking an issue. It's it's very helpful in the development of uh, web applications and testing them on the device. Um, and something interesting is that uh, how actually the connectivity between, I mean, aside from the simplicity of uh, creating the UIs using web technologies with any framework, like it's very important to know how the connectivity with the internal layers of AGL is going to be done with application framework in this case. And this is going through web sockets based on the existing AFB that was done by IoT. Uh, uh, that's actually a way to wrap the calls to the application framework on which we define on top of um, application, a JavaScript application binder library uh, to centralize all the, all the calls that are done to this uh, application framework and how that actually works. So it basically <clears throat> imports the subscription and call uh, APIs and then it actually wraps uh, JavaScript methods and are exported as uh, callbacks for API calls. In this case, uh, those are examples for uh, the development of a mixer that is actually connecting to the API call audio mixer list controls and as uh, actually showing like the list of available controls and for them it's possible to send API calls to modify the volume and also to have subscriptions for a volume change or change on the controls like that. And then just the JavaScript applications can uh, subscribe to those events uh, that were provided by AGLJS API. And it would just be as simple as that. So then the, that, that would be actually behaving as a facade to connect the, the UI that is done with any, any framework to the application framework using this binder. And then this actually would be would be connecting like the existing systems um, with with uh, actually the AGL internals that would be provided by the sensors or whatever would be getting the needed information from. So this is like in the demo, there's still some ongoing work to address some uh, missing uh, bits of this connection, but uh, yeah, everything is ongoing to have like a complete set of functionalities for all of them. Um, so
So this is what the internal implementation of the WebSocket call at AFF, AFB is, that is basically uh, wrapping the connection to the specific, pushing like basically the message to, with the right token to the context uh, that requires uh, the connection with the different services. But yeah, all, all the code is there in the repositories and can be just, just checked and evolved uh, as, as for the rest of components, uh, feedback is welcome or, or issues are available in, in the different uh, communication channels. So yes, ongoing work there. Uh, so with all this in place, we, we were setting a small uh, virtual booth uh, to show a few of these functionalities and I'm going to play a, a small video that is actually showing them. We would like to present the work we have done for automotive grade running. Our work provides the capability of running independent web applications in the demo platform with different levels of permission while maximizing the performance of the different supported hardware devices. This is a pure HTML5 UI of the ABL demo platform running on an Enesic A3 board. This shows the home screen, the application launcher, and some sample web apps that demonstrate several features of the Chromium-based web runtime in the VPK UI. We evolved the Web OSE web application manager by LG to adapt it for ABL, integrating it with the ABL security model, application framework, and the older and waiting Chromium implementation that Adel will develop. The Web Application Manager allows for isolation of different web apps so that they have their own level of permission and access to web sockets exposing JavaScript APIs with different services in the car. For instance, the HVAC application can communicate with the fan system of the vehicle, but other web apps without the same permission, for example a game, will never have access to those services. Here we can see how the performance of a WebGL game run smoothly. This is a result of our implementation of ozone wavelength in the chromium upstream, which optimizes the usage of hardware acceleration. So yeah, this this was a, a small uh, application. It that that it's a pity that we are not like in person to be to have anyone being able to 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 test it and and to to run it live, but yeah, hopefully next time. Uh, so basically uh, we are still doing some ongoing work and we have some future plans. So basically we have kept working on, on some open tasks. So basically um, uh, the latest Jellyfish version ships a new, a brand new AGL compositor that we have been integrating with, uh, with the web runtime and one that uh, we we want to have like a better integration with it and uh, address some some moving parts that are there um, uh, we need to finish also the update of chromium and web to newer versions to have like the the latest capabilities that chromium provides and yes yeah, as, as mentioned also bug fixing and completion of uh, completion of some uh, of the web apps functionalities and and some constant performance and, and stability improvements so yeah, there's there are a few a few open issues that we are working on, which which most of them can are tracked and can be followed at Jira the, at the open automotive Linux uh, Jira with the Web App Manager label, uh, and and uh, we are always available for any communication on the different channels as RC or or the dev calls uh, that happen uh, weekly. And, and yeah, on the face-to-face -face meetings that unfortunately are not so face-to-face -face lately, um, but we'll be, we'll be getting back to normal at some point, we hope. Uh, so that was all. So thanks to everyone uh, and hope to see you in person next time. And yep, yeah, now, now it's time for any, any doubt and question. Thank you.